Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So behind me, I got a 2017 Porsche Macan S. This thing has around 25,000 miles on it, and we are going to be replacing the rear pads and rotors on this car. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we begin, uh, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. It definitely helps the channel grow. With that said, let's go ahead and start on the repair. All right, guys, so before you even begin to work on the car, one thing that you gotta know is in order to do this job, you need to have a scanner because you are going to have to be able to put the car in the actual service mode to be able to replace the rear brake pads and rotors. The reason for this is that the rear e-brake on this vehicle is electronic and you got to be able to tell the computer to not apply them and to release the brake caliper so you can push the piston in and this job goes a lot smoother that way so if you don't have access to a scan tool or some sort of scanner that can put the rear brakes in the service position i wouldn't attempt this just as a fyi in the last clip, I mentioned that you guys need a scanner to be able to put these rear calipers into service mode. Now, I know if you look online, guys, there are certain methods that you can do without a scan tool where you could, you know, like jumper wire the motor and things like that. I'm not going to show you anything like that because honestly, I don't recommend it on this kind of a car. You don't want to damage the electrical system or do anything. If you don't have the computer and you are you know dead set on doing your own brakes i'm sure you can look online and find a way to do it without a scanner as far as being able to set this caliper into the service position however here at the shop we use the scan tool and i just want to advise people it's better with the scan tool it won't damage anything and it creates less of a headache and it's a lot easier to do it this way but i don't want to tell you guys that if you don't have it you can't do it there are ways is just in this method i'm not going to be showing anything other than the computer because that is the correct way to do it so now that we have that out of the way uh, the first thing that we're going to want to do here guys is go ahead and loosen up our caliper bolts i'm going to get the camera set up and i'll show you guys that process so i have you guys set up this is the best angle that i can get because i have my light here otherwise you can't really see anything so i can't really get you guys on the back side for all this action hopefully this will suffice now where i like to start on these is i find my brake pad wear sensor and where my bleeder nipple cap is i'm going to go ahead and pop this off because porsche uses this as a hold down for the actual uh, brake pad wear sensor as you saw right there we went ahead and released it and then what I'm going to do here also is use my little screwdriver to unhook the little latch that holds it spin around our wire here and what we're gonna do is remove it off of its little bracket go ahead and press the tab in and go ahead and remove the car harness side from the brake pad wear sensor now also back here it's going to be very difficult to show you you have this connector which is going to be for the motor i don't know how well the camera is picking it up there i'm going to go ahead and disconnect that it's the same exact way uh, you just kind of push on the tab since it is at an angle i'm just going to use my uh, pocket screwdriver to be able to get it off and we went ahead and we disconnected that right here and we got that off of our motor for our emergency brake the reason why i disconnect that is not because you have to it's just if you are able to do so you give yourself a little bit more clearance when you remove the caliper itself to swing it over so i'm going to go ahead and put my connections behind my shock here if they will stay uh, sometimes they do, but sometimes they don't. Uh, hopefully that'll suffice for right now. Now that we have everything disconnected, guys, what I'm going to do here, if I'm able to, is go ahead and remove my brake pad wear sensor completely. Um, honestly, you can just kind of rip on these and pull them off. I have new ones. Um, the reason why I like to remove the wire and everything, so when I remove my caliper, it'll just come off and I'm not trying to fight that wire or having it pull out with me uh, so you want to be careful uh, with that just go ahead and remove it now uh, next thing that we're going to do is loosen up our caliper bolts now these do have a tendency to spin uh, what you're going to want to do is have something to hold them i normally just grab them with my pliers and what i do is i go ahead and i just take them off um, it's quite easy um, it is a little tedious but they're exactly like any other brake job you got one on the top one on the bottom i'm gonna go ahead and do this off camera and i'll be right back with you guys once i have them both off since i showed you guys the top that i removed it was right here i just did it off camera 
I'm gonna remove the bottom one. It's the same thing. I'm gonna use my little holding tool here. Um, and I'm sorry guys that this isn't the best angle. Uh, it's just really hard to record this and do it. Now I'm also gonna do the same thing down here that I did up top. I'm just gonna hold it and then go ahead and loosen it. Um, I just kind of want to show you guys at least the in-depth uh, with steps to see how I do it. Uh, so I'm referring to this bolt up here that was there and then this one down here. I'll go ahead and take both of those off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and work mine out the rest of the way and then I'll be back on the next clip. Now that we have both of uh, our bolts off, you can see the caliper is pretty loose. And this is where it's easy if you guys went ahead and put everything into service mode. This caliper will act just like a regular caliper. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and just go ahead and push it back here. And you will see it moves like butter. It literally has nothing that's keeping it uh, from going back into its place. If you don't put them into service mode, what will happen is that you're not going to be able to do it this way and it takes a lot longer guys. So having the right tool for the job um, is a, a big thing here. Um, and I know a lot of you might say, well, I don't have a $2,000 or $3,000 scan tool and I understand that. Uh, there are other ways to get around it uh, that I mentioned. Uh, if you just kind of Google for the specific here, I'm sure you can find something. Uh, but we use the computer in this scenario and you saw how easy it was. Um, one thing that I'm going to do next, just to make sure my piston has gone fully engaged uh, inside the bore there, making room for everything, I'm going to go ahead and hook up my tool here to compress it in all the way. Um, Porsches are a little difficult. You can't just put like a standard tool in here. You got to use a similar style to this one because this here will uh, kind of blockade you. So if you use like the manual hand ones uh, from back in the day, like the one with the knob in the middle, it's not going to work. Uh, just to give you guys an FYI, you got to have something like this because this little cover that they put here uh, to pretty it up uh, gets in the way and interferes. Uh, I do know that these come off, but I don't know if they're glued on there or what the case is, but you can clearly see this one can come off. However, I'm not going to damage it or do anything like that. I'm just going to use the tool that I have here and we're going to take our caliper and lay it down to the side right there. Uh, the next step that we're going to want to do and let me see my camera if it's even visible, but I'll kind of zoom you guys in. We have this bolt right here, and we have another bolt uh, right here where my finger is. Those are the caliper bracket retaining bolts. Uh, we're going to go ahead and loosen those off and get those out of our way. Um, the angling here is horrible for these. Um, plus on this one, our caliper is actually in the way here we're gonna have to move this a little further up make sure it doesn't hang by our brake line make sure it's supported and I'm gonna take my wrench here and try to break these loose um, the camera being in the way I don't have the best angle here guys so if I block anything I do apologize in advance so we're gonna go ahead and loosen that one and then we have the one on the bottom here let me see if I can get my ratchet on there and just like that these are both loose now what I like to do is break them loose by hand and once I break them loose I have my Milwaukee impact uh, ratchet that I have and I just basically use this to drive them out all the way uh, the top bolt on these is going to be longer uh, than the one on the bottom I believe uh, let me just see here because it goes through a tang so as you guys can see the bottom one is fairly short whereas the top one is fairly long so the long one always goes on the top just be mindful of that now that we got those off what we're gonna do is go ahead and remove our bracket just like so and what we're gonna do next is go ahead and remove our rotor now we're going to remove our rotor guys it's quite easy on these what i like to do is take a lug nut or lug stud whatever uh, these things are called and go ahead and screw it in a couple threads now we're going to take our retaining screw off if you'll notice you have where your lug nuts go and then you have this one torque screw right there you're going to want to remove that because that is actually the holder that'll keep it in place 
We're gonna use our impact to take it off. Let's see if we get lucky and it comes off. So luckily it came off. It's just a small little bolt. With the retaining screw that holds on the rotor removed, uh, what we're gonna do next is go ahead and hit the rotor to get it off. Now we have new rotors guys, so it doesn't matter really where you hit it. Uh, obviously you just don't wanna hit the hub or anything. Uh, you can hit it here on the face or hit it on the actual uh, braking surface. I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna take the easy way out and just hit it on the braking surface because if you hit it here, you can resonate it a lot more and be able to get it loose. If you hit it right here, it doesn't resonate as much and it doesn't really break loose real easy. So I'm just gonna take my uh, hammer here and give it a whack. And as you saw, one hit, it came right off. And one thing I want to point out, guys, notice that my actual uh, lug nut or lug stud, whatever you prefer to call it, uh, held it from coming right at the camera and falling on the floor. Uh, it's very, very common that when these come off and you have to hit them like that, they fall right off and will either hit you or fall on you depending on the situation of how your car is lifted in the air. So always implement this and use one of these on here so it doesn't fall and hurt you. Because as you can see here, I can just go ahead and push it back, unscrew it, and then go ahead and take off my rotor and no one really got hurt during the process. Uh, didn't fall on my feet or come straight at the camera and damage the camera. Now with the rotor removed, what we're gonna do is take our die grinder here with the oatmeal cookie and we're gonna go ahead and clean up the surface. Uh, it's pretty loud, so I'm gonna go ahead and time lapse it for you guys so you can see me doing that and not have to hear the loud sounds. Now that you've gone ahead and you've cleaned your surface, what you're gonna wanna do is just take a brake cleaner and clean up the area. Uh, you're not gonna go crazy cleaning the vacuum plate. If uh, you do wanna go to that extent, you can. However, just cleaning it up pretty uh, good like that, just getting dust off is all you really need. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do next is either let it dry uh, just for a couple minutes or take your air wand and just blow everything off. Since we are in the shop, we have air, I will use that to my advantage. And uh, the next step is we're going to be installing our rotor. So to install your rotor, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and just put it into place and line it up. Now be careful, don't let this go because this can easily fall out of there, guys. Uh, I'm going to leave it there for a second just until I get my retaining screw. And I'm going to make some room here on the opposite side because... I am definitely going to be in the way of the camera if I don't. So what I'm going to do here is line up my screw, go ahead and push it in, and we're going to slowly bolt it back up. Now, I will be honest with you guys, uh, the rear rotors on this car, the customer brought me. I don't know if they've been sitting for a while, but you can kind of see there's a little bit of rust factor on there. It's not anything major. It'll clear up when uh, you drive it, but you can see there's couple little dots there I don't know what the story behind this is but um, these parts were supplied by the customer they were outside of a box when I got them maybe they had them for a while I don't know what the case is it's not gonna impair or hurt anything uh, I just wanted to mention that in case you guys are noticing that I want to give you guys some sort of explanation so you're not confused or baffled as to why that's happening so now we're at the bench, we got our caliper bracket guys and what we're, we're going to do is go ahead and take off the old pads and take off all of the old hardware. These clips just pop right off. Uh, where I like to begin is I'll pull off our pins and we'll just apply some brake lube on there. Um, you, these already have a generous amount, they're not really locked up, but I still like to add some. Uh, they actually have the same lube that I have that I'm using except mine is colored purple. This is a very high temperature uh, brake lube guys. It's uh, silicone based. Um, so no need to uh, you know mix them up is the same exact thing. Um, now what I'm going to do is take my brush and this is where you got to clean up these slides. Now these brackets don't really rot up. They're generally pretty good but you want to take your brush and just clean out the grooves here um, just to get everything cleaned up nice and good. If you have a way to sandblast these, you can also do that. However, just like any brake job that I do on the channel, I clean them out like this. And I'm gonna probably spend a little bit more time cleaning these up here off camera. And then when I come back, I'll show you guys how to 
do the reassembly of the clips and everything. All right, guys, we got everything cleaned up and we're going to be taking our new clips here. And what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and line them up and install them. Um, these are really easy. I'll be honest with you. These are probably the easiest clips that you can do. Uh, they just go right into place. It's not like a lot of the other ones where you got to match it up in here and then clip these and back and forth. Uh, Porsche did a really good job or Volkswagen um, did a really good job of designing these. Uh, in case you guys don't know, Volkswagen, Porsche, Audi, all these um, is the same company, guys. Um, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and lubricate the hardware where my brakes go into. Um, people have mixed feelings about this. Depending on uh, who you watch here on YouTube or the mechanic or whatever the case might be, some people may say you're supposed to lubricate underneath these. Some people will do it like me. Uh, this is my style, guys. This is how I've done it. I've never had any issues or complaints. Uh, plus, the way I think of it is you want to basically put a cushion where your brake pad is going to be sliding. Um, so my brake pad slides in the grooves right here. I'm going to loop up the actual bracket where the brake pad slips into. If you grease up underneath there, all you can really do is stop, you know, if I'm rusting a little bit or something like that. But at least this way I'll have the brakes, you know, moving. And there are some folks out there that don't even lubricate them at all. They install them dry. Um, everyone has a different method. Don't hate on me. This is just how I do it when it comes to this process. Um, you know, it's just how I've always done it. Always works, never fails. So I'm going to go ahead and take our bracket to the car now. We're going to reinstall the bracket. I have you guys set up into position and we are going to be reinstalling our bracket. Uh, these are very simple to reinstall, uh, just kind of like how we removed it. Uh, just want to find a position for it and it goes right there. Um, remember, long bolt goes up top, short bolt is on the bottom. Uh, what I'm going to do is try to position my top bolt first. Um, this one is the easier one of the two. Once you can get a couple threads on that, it's a lot easier to do the bottom one. Um, let me just see here if I can find it. There it goes. And I always start off by hand threading it, guys. And now that we've hand threaded it, what I'm going to do is go ahead and tie that up and get it torqued. Um, since you guys probably don't want to see me, you know, spending five minutes tightening these up, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and, you know, stop this clip here. Uh, just make sure you tighten it and torque it, whatever you do. Um, as you guys always know, I don't really show me torquing stuff because someone's always going to have a different spec or a different method or something. So I'll leave it to you guys on how you want to tighten up your bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on my end and I'll be right back with you guys. Now that we've tightened everything up guys, what we're going to do is go ahead and grab our brake pads. Now one thing to keep in mind is the outboard pad is not going to have a cutout here but the inboard one will. Make sure you don't mix them up because the one with the cutout for the sensor is the inboard pad. And what you typically do on these is you just line them up and slide them right in just like that. Make sure your hands are not filled with grease. Uh, if you get any sort of grease on the surface, you wanna clean it up really quick. That way it doesn't you know, contaminate the pad. With the pads put into place, what we're gonna to wanna to do next and come around here and grab our caliper. Now this is going to be a little difficult to show, uh, but as always guys, what you're going to want to do is put some of your brake grease onto your caliper. Um, you don't really want to put a whole lot, but enough to where the metal to metal surfaces are coated. And you're also going to be putting some on the inside lip here. Uh, I'm limited into what I can show you right now just because of the angle of the camera um, and the lighting situation, but let me go ahead and position this kind of out this way, guys. Um, you can see I put some grease on there and on these tabs on the inside. Um, once you do that, what you're going to want to do is go ahead and grab your caliper and position it onto your bracket. It should go on very easy. Um, if you find yourself having to really hit this on there and position it or something of that nature, I would say stop, something's wrong because it shouldn't take that much to put in. Um, what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and put my bottom bolt in 
Um, just kind of get a couple threads work in on that one. And on the top bolt, you're going to have this bracket and the top bolt has like this weird weight on it. I'm assuming this is for vibration dampening or some sort of noise. So uh, they came with new hardware in the box. I'm reusing, or I'm, I should say I'm using the new hardware, not reusing the old hardware. Um, we also have this bracket that holds onto the uh, brake pad wear sensor. Um, these two go together like this and hopefully it's in the frame here. I'll actually position you guys a little bit up. Uh, I'm going to see my witness marks from before. So this bracket was on here like that. And then we're going to go ahead and take our new retaining bolt there and just go ahead and start it up by hand threading it. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and tighten everything up and once again guys, I'm going to do this off camera so you guys can tighten your stuff how you want. I tighten mine my way um, just to save everybody some time and hassle. I'm going to do it off camera and then I'll be back once it's time to do the next step. Alright guys, so the last step in this now is going to be to install your brake pad wear sensor. Uh, just note that the site that has this gold clip or copper clip is going to be facing towards the piston. And the side that's thicker, that has more plastic, is going to be facing towards the brake pad. Um, it goes right here in the channel. I showed you guys the cutout earlier. All you really have to do is go ahead and push it on there. And once you get it positioned on there, the way they hold these on, if you guys saw earlier in the video, the first thing that I did was I popped off this little uh, cap, the dust boot, for the bleeder. It basically routes in there, has its own little area. And what you're supposed to do now is go ahead and find your connector, um, which is right here. And we're going to clip the two together. Now I'm going to zoom the camera out a little bit here and hopefully I can show you guys the rest of this the way it should be. Um, let me see if my camera has any more adjustment. But uh, what I'm going to do is clip it into place. Now the clip may be a little difficult for you guys uh, so i just want to kind of explain how it goes first you can see there's going to be a cutout on it and you have this little tab kind of like a finger that sticks out that's going to locate on that little bracket that we just installed with the bolt so what i like to do is go ahead and put it in there and all you got to do is turn and once you get to a point where it stops you're just going to push back on the tab and you're going to want to listen in for the click once it clicks in try to move it back and forth and you can see it'll be held in place pretty good. Now in this scenario, uh, we have a little bit of extra wire here. Uh, for some reason, the manufacturer of this is an aftermarket company that my customer uh, got these from. So what we're gonna do is just kind of loop it around and keep it away from anything that's moving. And it looks like it'll be pretty good right there. And the next step in this is to go ahead and plug in your motor for your parking brakes that we previously disconnected. Now that everything is plugged in and connected guys, you're pretty much all set and done as far as the mechanical portion of it. What we're gonna do next is go ahead and put our brakes with our scanner back into the service mode, which is basically enabling the parking brake. And what it's gonna do is uh, gonna start retracting or unretracting the motors and putting them into their regular position. All right, guys, so I went ahead and I put them back into the working mode so they are out of the servicing position. Um, I heard my calipers in the back. The motors were retracting outward and spinning, uh, so everything is all set. Everything checks out. Um, we are basically done with the brakes. All you have to do at this point is install the wheel on the car and take it out for a test drive. That's how you do rear brakes and rotors on a Porsche Macan, guys. Uh, this isn't really that bad. It takes uh, a little bit of time and a little bit of patience, but you are able to do it. I want to say the most difficult thing of all on this car is going to be getting the rear calipers retracted. If you guys do not have the tool, that will become probably the biggest issue on here. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward just like any other brake job. Uh, so hopefully this video helps you guys out if you guys are attempting to do this job or if you guys were just curious as to how to do this job in particular. So with that said, please comment, like, and subscribe down below, guys. It definitely helps the channel grow. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.